you tell us, brought my good friend Rob Price on, <laughs> Rob Price on to talk about uh, about someone uh, I believe he knew a little bit better than I did for sure, and that's uh, it's Doc, Rod, and Mike on tonight. He's going to tell us a little bit about Roddy Piper. So, uh, uh, Rod, you know I brought you on, and his sole purpose was to pay tribute to a, a really great man in this uh, industry. So I'm just going to throw it at you and, and let you tell us uh, tell us about uh, Roddy Piper and your thoughts on him and whatnot. Okay, Mike, I appreciate it, man, and it's quite an honor. Uh, Piper is, was not, you know, he was one of the greatest heels, if not the greatest heel ever. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have a Hulk Hogan. You wouldn't yep. have anything. So, starting off there, I mean, I've, I've listened to so many uh, tributes to Roddy this mm-hmm. past week, and, you know, everybody everybody says about the same thing about the man, how caring and passionate and loving he was, you know, t- towards the business, and he was easy to get along with. He had a very volatile relationship with McMahon, but mm-hmm. that was his style. He uh, he didn't, uh, let's say he didn't take any crap or he didn't put up with it. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, separations between that relationship, but it never mm-hmm. broke. But right. my experience with Roddy, he was, uh, I'll tell you the one when we were, did the Texas Walker Ranger, and we were in the sportorium, and it was the last last time they were going to do anything there. Mm-hmm. And we uh, we met at the hotel and we talked. I I knew him and I knew of him through oh man Johnny Mantell, Tim Brooks. They're just stories right. after stories that you know. It's just. You hear these stories, and you hear about the man. You meet the man a few times, and you're able to be around him. And uh, it's just like it's like a, you know one of your friends that you you just met, but you feel like you've known him all your life. You know, we just connect yeah, yeah. right away. But uh, right, I mean, we we sit in the hotel room, and uh, man, we talked about everything from the death of Lyle Alzado at the time to uh, uh, family, you know. Mm-hmm. I know he. I know he loved. He loved his family. I know. I know how he talked about uh, loving Jesus Christ as his personal savior. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's something I'm strongly. I love Jesus, and I'm not. I'm not ashamed to say that. And he wasn't either. I mean, he was. Uh, he was out there, but. At the time, at the time that I was with him, he was uh, he was reeling it back in and realized, you know, I can't I can't be my best for Jesus Christ if I'm being a professional wrestler. And yeah, he saw a lot more of the dirty dirtiness, and I I saw enough in my career, and I just didn't, you know, you, it, you get involved with being on the road and you get sucked up into the alcohol and the drugs and this and that and before you know it you know they're they're running you you're not running them and yeah yeah and he uh he decided and I decided at the time that you know it was time to take a break from a lot of things and uh we were checking off our list what we were taking out of our off our repertoire you could say, but yeah, uh, yeah. but the man was uh, he was so easy going. He wanted that when we were out there practicing in front of just Chuck Norris and a couple of the directors and producers. He wanted to keep K. Fabe going so bad, <laughs> but he uh, he got lost. You know what we had talked about and. He was talking, you know, and I'd come over and give him a little buzz about, hey, we want to do this. And he, he'd rant and go off and tell him how we were going to do this and do that and how we were going to kind of choreograph this this uh, match. And we got back, and 
He goes, hey, uh, meet me uh, meet me down here like at uh, say eight o'clock, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take you to dinner. And I said, man, sounds great. So we yeah. uh, we went over to Benny Hanna's, and man, as soon as we walked in there, people swarmed him. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, it was uh, I just took a step back and enjoyed the enjoyed the thing. And after the shoot, uh, Chuck Norris, because we did it around Christmas time, right? And Chuck Norris had a had a little. Christmas party for uh, the cast and the crew and everybody, and he had a uh, he invited us and everybody's dressed to a T. You know, nobody told me anything about uh, the Christmas party or nothing. I was just basically coming in to to do my little part and get out. I thought, and after the after the production, uh, I was invited to uh, go to the Christmas party. And brother, I didn't have you know I had jeans and boots and I had a big sweater I bought uh, when I was in Germany. A big wool sweater. And it was cold. So I threw that on, you know. And yeah. we were we were picked up in a limo and Piper's dressed to the T, Rolex on and everything. And he slid <laughs> out first and I slid out second. And the and the driver goes, he hands me his card and he says, uh Give me a call when you guys are ready to leave. I guess I I became Piper's bodyguard that night. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a blast, man. We had some good times, and again, I know Johnny Mantell was up in Portland with him, and I, and I read some of his stories that uh, you know how giving he was. He helped Johnny paint his house one time, you know for just absolutely nothing, knew his family yeah. very well. And I, I've just heard more personal stories that are out there that I'm sure everybody that's a wrestling fan of his have listened to. So I'm, right. just, giving my, I'm just giving you my two cents, Mike, and uh, you guys can roll it around, and I'm going to step away and let you do that, man. Well, no, uh, it's funny. um like I, I've all, I've said that since I heard the news, uh, you know, Rod. I, you know me. I, I grew up. I was born in the '70s, but I kind of grew up in that late '70s, early '80s era of professional wrestling. And mm-hmm. um, unlike Doc, I, unlike Doc, I was one of those idiot Hulkamaniacs. Um, I don't want to talk about Hulk right now. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about Hulk right now, just based on I don't want to make this discussion about him, based on everything that's happened recently, but. Um, my thing is, I agree with you, and I've said this for about the last week since I've heard the news, there is no Hulkamania without a Roddy Piper from a fan point of view because I will say that as a kid, you know, Roddy, I did not like him. Now, again, I'm 8, 9, 10 years old. I could not stand the man, um, the character, the, 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 the guy he was. So, um, right. and, and, and that means a lot, you know, like you look at it now as I'm almost 40 and Doc's over, you know, 40 as well. We look back and we're like, okay, yeah, this guy, he really was good at what he did. And, and there is no Hulk without a guy like him that just, you can't slice it any other way. And it, it goes beyond that. He, he's just been, uh, he, he just was a really, really great guy. Uh, Doc and I were talking, uh, uh maybe we weren't Doc, uh, remind me, but cause we have so many discussions about this, but, uh, you know, you kind of over the last, I guess, year, year and a half, he's got, he's had that podcast, Rod, and and uh, it it really like peeled back the onion. Like you got to know him more, and right. and in all of his podcasts that he's done, uh, and Doc, you could jump in in a second, but uh, you know, he kind of you we we kind of got to the point where we felt like, man, we got to know this guy on a different level. Uh, as he talked about his family and like he had his son on at one point and, and just right. telling all kind of stories you get to know him as just a really, really good guy. What, what you think doc? Well, yeah, exactly what you said. And the thing of it is he, he always had that wild kind of call it in the ring with the podcast and the podcast would be all over the place. <laughs> so that right. you, know, you yeah. could tell that his character was really, you know, the hot rod character really came from a place, a genuine place that was him. But you also got a feeling that he was the guy who his kids were the most important thing in his life. Family meant everything to him. And so you could, you really got to see both sides of of what it it was probably a glimpse of what he was like in maybe in the locker room, but also 
a glimpse of maybe what he was like at home as well. Well, you know, yeah. you got to you got to remember he started wrestling when he was fifteen. That was his first match, and which is incredible. Yeah, and he been in this business, seen the ins and outs. So the time he went to uh, when McMahon was taking over the business, and he started Piper's Pit. That was all his creation. That was that was Roddy's creation. Vince would give him, you know, you need to touch this. You know, we need to push this night and this night and this this match or whatever. And he said, other than that, go with it. Mm-hmm. So Piper, you know, it was just his creativity. And I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of stealing words out of what uh, Jim Ross said, but you know, he was he was such an incredible had such an incredible mind for the business. He just knew knew how to knew how he knew people. He knew how to how to give that psychology. He knew how mm-hmm. to he knew how to touch them, knew how to make them mad and he was making them bad or mad in a day when uh it was a dangerous time when uh when they really thought wrestling was uh for real. And the way Piper went at it, you had to, you know. He made you believe it. He did. He did. He he always, Rod, he he talked about on his podcast a lot. He said this a million times on that show. But uh, he he would always say, I, I don't I don't I don't want to talk much about about what I'm going to do in the back. I want I want to I want to walk out the curtain. I want to feel the crowd, and then I want right. to get in the ring. And we don't need to call all that stuff in the back. We we just we just going to get out there and. We're gonna see what these people. We're gonna see what these people doing, and then we're gonna react yeah. to it. And we're gonna and we're gonna move, and we're gonna make it work that way. Like he, you know, he said that all. I mean, God, he said it weekly. It felt like on his show, and uh, uh, he just um, and that goes back to what you just said about like Jim Ross saying, you know, that mind that he had for it. His mind was on a different level than um than others, and you could see it, and it came through, and and what he did, and what he portrayed out there. You're right with Piper's Pit and all that. I mean. He was, he was like a genius. It was uh, it was unreal. Very, very much. He uh, <laughs> he was off the wall, man. He. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think back uh, years ago, watching some of the stuff as I was coming up, and it was just like incredible, mm-hmm. <laughs> incredible what he would come up with, and not till years till I was in the business so I, that I learned the psychology of just, and I had a lot of great people help me, but I mean, that's, that's the way we were taught though. You know, let's, let's go see what the fans are biting on, you know? Right. And that's right. why, that's why you had to watch every match because you didn't want to repeat what was done in the first or second or whatever match you were in. Yeah. Yeah. I can really be told that if you see somebody, yeah. Someone's doing something match one, uh, and you might not want to <laughs> repeat it. I mean, they've seen it, so give them something new to chew on. Yeah, um, yeah. Piper was just—he's one of a kind. That's why I wanted to bring you on and talk about him. And you know, I, as a performer, I look back and I'm like, man, he was so young, Rod. I mean, 61 is not old by any no. means, and no. just man, it's just 60. Like when I read it, when I saw it on social media Friday. Uh, it was literally, uh, I don't know, a few hours after we dropped our last show, so we didn't catch the, we didn't, we weren't able to talk about it. Um, and I saw the news. I'm like, oh, please tell me TMZ is just reporting something that's not true. Uh, right. And then as it, and then as it, because you know how that goes. I mean, it, there's just, it's just these reports. You get them, they're erroneous, and before you know it, you're like, oh, that's not true. And then with this one, it just, it was verified and. Just a really, really sad moment for someone who I thought, you know, I feel had so much life left in him. I know he lived a – he's even said it on his podcast, right, Doc? He's talked about how he, he, he lived some, you know, some, some rough some rough uh, times in his life. But, um, yeah, yeah, you know, 61, Rod, that's so young, man. It's just – it's hard. Oh, I know, man. That's, that's why, uh, you know, we're not promised tomorrow, Mike, only today. So we've got to make the yeah. most of it today. Because you never yeah. know. You never know you when don't. Uh, you're going to be called. You don't. Which, I know you always post that, too, on Facebook. You'll post little things like, uh, I'm just glad I woke up today. And, 
and you know references to things like that and you know for Roddy it's like man it's just never know 61 and he's gone I'm, I think to myself and I'm like I'm only 21 years from that that's not a long time I mean oh 61 that's just rough and no right I'm glad you talked about him and we're able to share that story because I that's something I'd never heard before I never knew yeah, that Mike yeah it was uh you know, very touching. When I heard the news that he passed, I just, uh, I was taken back. I mean, I, you know, it really, uh, really touched me hard, you know, and from seeing the reaction, it touched a lot of people that way. It was just unexpected from a guy that was so full of life to, uh, to be gone. Yeah. Had you, had you, um, have you heard any of his podcasts? Had you ever tuned in to any of them? No, Mike. I really, honestly, uh, the only I just happened <laughs> to run across. I happened to run across Jim Ross's one while I was looking through something, and it popped up. Gotcha. And yeah. uh, I really, I really don't. I mean, uh, sad to say, I probably should, but I, I guess that era has passed me by. I'm just kind of <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm behind, behind the eight ball on that stuff, guys. Yeah, no, it's. I'm really it's, showing my age. No, no, no. The only reason I ask is because one of the great things about it is the, all those stories. They're now recorded, and they will live on forever as long as there's an internet. Because um, uh, like all of his stuff, I was on there the other day, and I downloaded a couple of them again just to have them on my iPod. They're uh, they're all there. So, like, all the stories he had when he brought on guys like uh, Len Denton and, and the various uh, – Jim Duggan and uh, – oh, he's, he's had on everybody, Rod. Uh, you know, all those stories that he told and whatnot, they're all on there. And, and I think, like, to me, I look at it and I go, he still lives on through those things because if you think about a lot of the guys that, you know, you came up with, they didn't have that means of – like all that media where it would be recorded, like all these stories that you probably heard sure. in the past, Absolutely. they may they're not cap they're not encapsulated anywhere. Whereas the thing about today's media, um, it's a bad thing in a way with Twitter and Facebook in certain ways. But you know you got these podcasts and they capture people's lives and histories and they'll live on forever. So that's that's the good part of it. Um, related to the pod, that's the only reason why I asked you if you had, if you had heard any of them because they're really, they, he really did tell a lot of good stuff. I mean he's got so many of them I couldn't even recall. Oh, I know. Uh, I know. Imagine being in the business since you were 15. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Right. He told some stories about Johnny Valentine. You can't even drive through the territory. Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) What were you saying, Doc? He he told some stories about Johnny Valentine pulling a shotgun in a a locker room somewhere in in the early 70s. And how the rib, the rib war in the locker room escalated to dynamite being placed under the hood of a car of one of the guys, <laughs> one of the boys. It's yeah. it's it, yeah. He got into some. He gets. In, I mean, some of the stuff he says, Rod. Honestly, if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have spent a little bit of time in the business, I wouldn't believe it. But because right. I spent a little bit of time, That's and I actually incredible part. Right, you like some of the some of the stuff he told, some of the stuff he tells in his stories. There, there, so many people would be in jail, which that doesn't shock you, I'm sure. <laughs> it, no, it's not funny. Well, Mike, Mike, you know, back, back, you know, the part that that you really missed out on was being able to go to, you know, from working town to town, run the run the circuit, yeah, and yeah. Uh, being on the road, man. You <laughs> usually. <laughs> You got with a certain crew, and that's who you ran with. And a lot of things happen on the road. <laughs> yeah, so I've heard. Uh, and and, and Piper that. told them all. Piper told them uh, yeah. everything that he had happened to. I mean, him and Jake were telling a story one time about what they did to Matilda, the the British bulldog. Uh-huh. And. Well, Jake, something happened. I can't even remember what, but Jake fed the dog a bunch of chili dogs, chili cheese, hot dogs. And <laughs> long story short, the dog made a mess of the hotel room. <laughs> um, but they, they, him and Jake were telling this story. It, 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 
Doc didn't think it was fun. I, I'm a dog lover, but Doc didn't think it was too funny. He thought it was cruelty to Matilda, but I kind of laughed because I, I just realized, like, yeah, that's what them dudes did back then. I mean, they entertained yeah. themselves. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, you know, inside entertainment. That's how they kept themselves sharp and uh, and raw. Oh, that's right. The, the ribs, the ribs were out there. That's right. <laughs> you would always say that too. You like <laughs> I told you your famous line to me was you had never made it with Dickie. <laughs> Talking about Dick Murdoch. <laughs> it's like Dickie would have ate you alive, boy. <laughs> oh, Dick was something else, man. I know, I know. Uh, he he uh, love his famous was love getting the drinking contest. He drink about half a beer and make the other person drink full ones. <laughs> when they started losing, but we're talking about Piper. Uh, no, 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 I know, but no, no. Roddy was, uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm from my point of view is from a fa- fan point of view, and and uh, he was just, is, he was so great, and I hope I, I want him to. I, I, it was funny. I read something on Facebook, and I don't know, if this is mean, but someone posted and it said. Um, Piper had to one up Hogan one last time. Um, that, you know, with the controversy with Hulk and all this stuff, and and I thought to myself, man, that's crazy. But uh, you know, it's like to get the news and 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 all this happened with Piper, and he just was a really good dude. I'm I'm glad I got to listen to him for the last year or so on his show because he really got to you know he talked about his family a lot. He would talk about his times that he had, but. Man, Rod, I'm so glad you came on to talk about him and, and tell us a little bit more. Uh, that story was a great one. Uh, coming from somebody who was able to spend time with him, it's just, uh, man, uh, Roddy was a good dude. He, he's he's gone way too soon. I, I really hope the WWE does not like just do that one. They did a segment. I know you don't watch wrestling. They did they did two segments on Monday night, but I'd like them to do something else special. I don't know what. I couldn't tell you what, but they need to they need to do something. Um, to, to continue to, you know, have this man's spirit live on. I don't care if it's some kind of award they give people. I don't care what it is, but something needs to – they need to just, uh, you know, give them, give them more credit because there is no Hulkamania without Roddy Roddy Piper, bottom line. Absolutely no not. Absolutely not. There's no, there's no WWFE without That's right. Roddy Piper. So you, you hated him. I, well, not you, own. but, yeah, that's right. The fans hated him enough. They he gave them a reason to believe in that Hulkamania stuff. That's just how it works. You gotta you gotta have a you can't have a good guy without a villain. That's right. That's there's right. No, there's no Superman without a Lex Luthor, and there's it goes on and on. It's pretty but simple, huh? <laughs> it's good versus evil. I mean, that's what we're facing in this world today. People still want to see it, but that's what it's coming. That's what it's all about. But, yeah, uh, no, no, you're right. You're right. Hey, hey, Doc, you got uh, we're about 20, 23, 24 minutes into this. You got any more questions for uh, Rod related to to Roddy before we uh, before we wrap up? I, you know, I just there is one question, and it, it goes back to the match that that Piper and Valentine had. At Starcade '83, when they had that, <laughs> how do you notice? That, well, that, here I'll tell you why. They had the dog collar match, and Piper bled from his ear. Oh, okay. You did tell me about that. I don't remember this, but go ahead. That was well, Rod. Do you know the the match I'm talking about? Yeah, I remember. So, you know, I'm a kid that's nine years old at the time, and we don't have cable at that time. So all I see is Von Erich's Freebirds, which was really good to watch, but I would go get Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazines, and I, you know, you you flip through it, and I see, you know, at that time you're nine years old. There's no greater time than when wrestling is still real, real, real in your mind. Uh huh. So people, you know, your dad's starting to tell you, hey, this stuff's fake and all that, but. I flipped to the page where they show the pictures from Starcade 83 and Piper's bleeding out of his ear, and I'm thinking, my Lord, how is this fake? <laughs> and so yeah. I well, guess my but, question. <laughs> it was, it, it's a good fact, and, you know, it's, 
a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys used to juice from the forehead, but a lot of them used to juice from the ear too, because, you know, it's nothing but cartilage. You get a little cut on it, it bleeds like crazy anyway. And uh, it was uh, doing something different instead of bleeding from the forehead. Unless you got hard weight. He might have got hard weight and bust, got the ear busted open too. And once again, Piper is an innovator. He 